Hello, everybody. This is Bikam Baskert, Editor-in-Chief of Jack Hartfayer. I'm joined by my Deputy Editor at Jack Hartfayer, Akshay Desai. Hi, Akshay. Hi, how are you? Doing great. And Andrew Sauer, uh, the Director of Hartfayer at Mid-American Heart Institute at Kansas City. Hi, Andrew. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Thank you. We have a very exciting and useful review that we think is going to be quite uh, helpful to our readers, uh, which we'll be releasing at the ESC. A very timely review on mineralocorticoid receptor antagonism in heart failure through the whole spectrum and stages. And I would like to ask Dr. Sauer to provide us a, a little summary of what this review entails and why it is so timely. Thanks for the opportunity. And we're really excited to release our, our manuscript uh, in, a, in about a week. Um, we think it's timely because what we do in this article is we really cover comprehensively, in a sense, how we got here with mineralocorticoid antagonism. In particular, the aldosterone state is particularly pronounced in heart failure as well as heart, kidney, and metabolic disease. And we've uh, accumulated a robust evidence base for particularly treating patients with reduced ejection fraction heart flare over the past several decades. But what's been missing in particular is any use of this therapy in patients with preserved ejection fraction heart flare or mildly reduced ejection fraction heart flare. And we all know about the challenges that were faced after TopCat, for example, and the fact that ultimately it failed to meet its primary endpoint for a number of com conflicting reasons. Um, and, and our guidelines have not given a strong endorsement of uh, steroidal mineralic steroidal uh, MRAs in that space for that reason. So what we talk about is what are the opportunities and unmet needs? We also focus on steroidal versus non-steroidal MRAs. And we focus on what's coming in the, in the clinical trials in both of those categories, as, as we also focus on the more preserved ejection fraction heart failure space. So Thank Andrew, you. You, you know, you're giving a very nice perspective of MRA use over the full spectrum of low EF to higher EF, uh, heart failure, and then also this important distinction between steroidal and non-steroidal MRAs. Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, how the usage might vary across the spectrum and, and what the differences might be that we uh, may see that may sort of set up the, the coming fine arts HF trial? Yeah, as we know, the steroidal MRAs have um, huge advantages, obviously, in the literature, but some real disadvantages and limitations. In particular, there's a 10% rate of uh, gynecomastia, uh, breast tenderness, for example, particularly in men, um, for patients uh, receiving spironolactone. We obviously see less of that with the plerinone. Um, but the other advantages of the potential uh, opportunities for non-steroidal MRAs include um, different pharmacokinetics, um, different potency. They, they agonize the mineral corticoid receptor differently than the steroidal MRAs. Um, it's somewhat complicated, actually. And for, for example, balsinrenone has a partial agonist mechanism, which I think is a little bit challenging for us non-pharmacologists um, to really wrap our minds around. But there are advantages as it relates to the risks of hyperkalemia, for example. Um, many of these non-steroidals have been shown to be advantageous in mitigating the risk of hyperkalemia in smaller clinical trials so far. And we've also seen in, in pivotal trials, for example, with the CKD series, a diabetic kidney disease with the Fidelio and, and Figaro series, that there was less hyperkalemia uh, in the uh, finerenone pathway. So we do think there'll be advantages as these are more potent, more precise uh, targets. Uh, and I think that we have to see the, you know, the pivotal trials come forward, but I think there'll be a, some potential advantages for the non-steroidals. Thank you, Andrew. I would like to um, state that this is probably one of the most timely and comprehensive reviews one could get on MRA. Uh, you provide, uh, you and your uh, co-authors provide a very useful document, which provides the compilation of all studies in REF, heart failure with reduced EF, as well as PEF, as well as future trials. 
which I thought to be uh, quite useful. And you do go over the concepts of both steroidal, as you stated, as well as non-steroidal MRAs. So we believe this is the definitive, um, most probably comprehensive and timely review on MRA in heart failure. And we hope that it's gonna be uh, very useful to our readership. With that, I would like to thank uh, Akshay and Andrew um, for chatting with us and look forward to uh, collaborating with you and your contributions to Jack Heart Failure. Thank you. Thank you.